Okay, so I don't know if you guys have heard me talk about how you, uh, how do I put it? So you've got a timber that's way out of square, way out of whack, kind of hard to deal with. And I'm going to show you guys how I deal with that. Um, again, some of you guys who do this regularly, you're probably not going to like it, but this is how I'm doing it, and this is what's working for me. So I've got a girt here that I milled the other night in the last video, and I haven't been able to get back to it since. That's why this project's taken so long. There's just a lot of stuff going on, but enough of my whining about that. Anyhow, if you guys can see right now, and I knew these would be quite out of square because I didn't bother. I just threw them on the sawmill. And when you're doing skinny pieces like this on this sawmill, it's real hard to clamp. It pushes it to one side. But that is way out of square. That's about 3 16 by the time it comes up there. Now when I measure across from point to point, I get my 6 inches there. That's from, from where it squares up to the outside corner, I get my 6 inches. Now I want this to sit square inside the mortise for this girt. So what I do, and I've already got it drawn out, I've got a square line from nothing all the way up to there just to square it off. And I did the same thing on the other side. I just drew a square line. I'm not worried about these sides because I'm actually squaring to these. This is how I'm going to get this to set square in that mortise and it'll be square for the siding and I've said before that you're always looking for a timbers inner square and this is kind of how you're finding it because this also works and can also work for larger timbers so all I'm gonna do I'm just gonna cut this back but I'm only gonna cut it back as far as as far as the depth that I need it to. So I'm going to cut this back three and a half inches. And I'm going to square it off. And you can see I cut this a little wider. I did that intentionally because I knew these edges weren't going to be very good. So this is my... And I'm going to square off the same side. Because right now, these sides are equally out of square, so I don't even have a decent reference face that I can work with on this. But we're going to kind of make one here just for the, uh, the tenon and the housing portion. The way it sits exactly how it has to sit. And remember on the last video I said I don't, I'm not too concerned about the quality of my girts as long as they're not rotted. Obviously I don't want them all twisted and gnarly either. That was one very large complaint. The only complaint I have on that sawmill is when you're trying to do thin pieces like this, it is damn near impossible to get it nice and square the way you want it. So if any of you have the Hudson Mills and you've run into this issue, let me know. Like I said in the last video, these are just girts. I'm not overly concerned about perfection on them. I'm more concerned that they just fit right. And this will make it easier for me to make them fit right. Another thing you guys are going to want to do, if you've got a bunch of these to cut, I'm going to show, I'm going to tell you 
the biggest mistake I've made on this project, the absolute biggest mistake, and I went against the advice because I was in a yank just to get one section done at a time, and it bit me in the ass, and I probably could have made a lot more progress a lot faster. If you got a bunch of one kind of timber to cut, and they're all the same size, mill all the damn things up, lay them all out, cut them all at once. That way, you're going to pick up mistakes a little bit quicker, but at the same time, everything's going to be the same. You're going to have consistency, you're going to have production. Like when I go to add on to the house and we're, we're, going, to do a, uh, we're going to do hammer beams in the house, I'm going to cut everything all at once, like a production line. We're going to get one piece. So say I have 20 wall posts to cut, I'm going to cut 20 wall posts and get them all done at once. I should have done it like this. But following up with that with a little more advice, if you're going to cut it like that, Get your pieces laid out going all the same direction. Make sure your cuts are going to be all in the same direction because it's a lot easier for you to follow it that way rather than jumbling them up and stuff like that. You're going to be able to you're going to be able to pick up a mistake a little bit quicker. I've made mistakes on this frame. I am not a professional timber framer. I've made many mistakes. Most of those mistakes have been not taking the time I needed to take or not working smart. If I was working smart, I wouldn't have made most of the mistakes I made. So just a little piece of advice for you guys. Take it. Take it how you want it. But uh, personally, from my experience, I won't do it again like I did this, like I'm doing this barn. When we get up to the second floor, all my top plates are going to be cut at once. I'm going to lay them all out, and we're going to cut them all at once. When we go to do the gambrel roof rafters, they're going to be all cut at once because I'm not screwing around with how I did it for this first floor. It cost me too much time and too many mistakes, but I'm going to keep going. Well, those girts out of the way, I guess. Nothing left to do but some heavy lifting. Now, what's a backache tonight? I'll take a backache tonight. Why not? So all we have left on this one, we've got to finish off the uh, the tie beam mortise on the back side, and we got to cut it to length on the bottom. That's all that's left on this guy.
Boy, if you guys never have a chance to cut a 10 by 10 post with a uh, handsaw, you don't know what you're missing. I feel like Popeye now. Well, that's it. That is this wall post is done. I have one wall post, just one stinking wall post left to cut for this barn. And that is a damn good feeling. But uh, bear with me, guys. Um, I'm trying to get trying to get rolling on this project again. I've had too much time away from it, so it always it always takes a little bit of. Uh, I got to see a few things get done before I can really, really get motivated to really get into a whole hog again. But uh, we're getting there. Next week I am going on a week-long vacation. I said it in the last video. The Gerswald family vacation. It's for me and all the in-laws. We all pack up when we head to New Hampshire for a week. And uh, I, haul the, uh, I haul the camper for the family with the uh, poor old power smoke there. But she does pretty good. So, anyhow guys, um, thanks for watching, uh, appreciate your views, appreciate your comments, appreciate your thumbs up and your thumbs down. See all you bitter bastards who like to uh, hit the thumbs down button, keep in mind it doesn't hurt me a bit, no, but I obviously don't like if uh, somebody's not liking what they're seeing, you know, please feel free to let me know whether it's in a private message or a comment, you know. I'm open to suggestions, guys. If there's something you don't like, please feel free. Put it out there. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna get mad about it. I'll tell you that. It, it takes a lot more than that to uh, get me irritated. So, anyhow, guys, have a good evening. I will catch you on the next one.